Good morning. I call to order the uh, January 8th, 2019 meeting of the uh, Saline County Board of Commissioners. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Shadrick? Here. Mr. Sparks? Here. Mr. Richardson? Here. Mr. Weeks? Here. Mr. White? Here. I ask that you please stand and join me in a flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We now move to the uh, public forum where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes and uh, items that are not on today's agenda. Norman Mandel, Salina, Kansas. In past meetings, one of the items that come up was the gypsum land purchase. And I heard a commissioner saying, well, why do we buy insurance? So are we filing the claim? Because if you buy insurance, you, that's what you do when you have damages, you file a claim. You get the land for nothing. Take the money that you get from the claim and apply it towards the purchase. They're, they're that isn't, title companies are liable for this. Uh, because what percent of your titles have a clear title? Your register of deeds are not accurate. Your register of deeds only goes back to 1861. If you go on past path, 1861, who owns this land? And who did you buy it from? So you need to look at that. Uh, and at a previous meeting, you had the city manager down there, and I was at the back, and he's got such a quiet voice. I think one of the issues is that your length of lease. Sounds to me like you guys, are, the, these negotiations are over because you ain't gonna get what they're offering you or what you want, take that back. You're wanting more, if any one of you can remember, I handed you a piece of paper, it should be 32 years, 2050. Anything else is unacceptable. So, I think your negotiation's over. And the jail population issue is coming up here pretty quick. When prosecution stops filing these frivolous charges, your jail population will decrease. As the population increases, so do your problems. So you're going. So what you're doing now, that ain't going to work. So now I've heard the word, well, we'll just go ahead and build a new jail. That ain't going to work. And the federal government just passed in the farm bill industrial hemp. Well, you're gonna have to buy some equipment to test this stuff because nobody knows the difference between the good stuff and the bad stuff. So now you got another issue, you're gonna have to spend more money. Uh, because it's in the farm bill, and it's legal now, I can legally transport that stuff on my farm vehicle. I can cut this stuff. I went to law enforcement, I asked him, I said, what are you gonna do? He said, we don't know. So it's coming. Thank you for your comments. Is anyone else you wish to uh, address the commission on public forum? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the uh, commission for regular business. Item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda for the public forum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number two. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of December 18th, 2018 as presented. Second the motion. Been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, commission minutes for December 18th, 2018. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number three. Approval of county commission minutes for January 2nd, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of January 2nd, 2019 as presented. Second the motion. Been moved and seconded that we accept the county commission minutes of January the 2nd, 2019, as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number four National Stalking Awareness Month Proclamation. Good morning, Abby. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> 
National Stocking Awareness Month proclamation January 2019. Whereas we, the local council of, Sil of Saline County, recognize stalking as intentional harassment, a pattern of behavior directed at a specific person, causing that person to feel fear and endangerment for themselves or their family. The variation in stalking behavior ranges from hang up phone calls to more direct threats toward a victim. The likelihood of injury increases when the stalking behavior escalates over time. Whereas under the laws of Saline County, Kansas and all jurisdiction in the US, stalking is a crime. Whereas the majority of victims are stalked by someone they know. Three in four women killed by an intimate partner had been stalked by that same intimate partner. Whereas the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas, or DVAC, assisted 67 people who identified stalking as their primary victimization in 2017 with an array of services including counseling and group support, uh, crisis hotline call reception, information and referrals, criminal justice advocacy, civil court advocacy, protection order and medical help, safety planning and transportation. Whereas, uh, da, 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 I lost my place. Whereas the Kansas Bureau of Investigation reports that 196 protection from stalking orders were filed in Saline County in 2017. Whereas the statistics do not represent the true incidence of pre or prevalence of stalking for multiple reasons, including um, not all victims report the crime to law enforcement, and stalking is a tactic of domestic violence and sexual abuse, so it may not be reported as the primary form of abuse and victimization, although the victim has experienced stalking along with the other forms of abuse. Whereas many stalking victims are forced to protect themselves by relocating, changing their identities, changing jobs, and obtaining protection orders. Whereas many stalking victims lose time from work and experience serious psychological distress and lost productivity at a much higher rate than the general population. Whereas many stalkers use technology such as cell phones, uh, global positioning systems or GPS, cameras and spyware to monitor and track their victims. Whereas communities can better combat stalking by raising awareness, adopting multidisciplinary responses by teams of local agencies and organizations, and by providing more and better victim services. And now, therefore, the Saline County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim January 2019 as National Stalking Awareness Month. Thank you. Do you have uh, other activities planned for this week we uh, do. or this month? Um, first and foremost, we offer uh, free community presentations. So um, we don't have anything planned as of yet, but we're always um, willing to go wherever somebody requests, uh, free of charge, and we'll talk your ear off about stalking. Um, we do a social media campaign, so Instagram, Facebook, we'll be posting statistics regularly, uh, safety planning, that kind of thing you can always watch out for. The Bargain Basket window, which is our thrift store downtown, 203 South Santa Fe, um, we usually decorate that. Uh, that'll be happening today, so you can always keep an eye out for that. Um, I handed out our newsletter, and that's got both stalking and human trafficking on that. And we do hand those out uh, by email, too, if you wanted to subscribe to that newsletter. We do them every month. Um, and then on Saturday 19th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., you can tune in to KINA Radio. Um, we'll have a one-hour talk segment about stalking and, and human trafficking. So. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we certainly appreciate the efforts of the uh, DVAC people and, and their personnel and everything that you bring to the community. Thank you thank very you. much. Uh, other comments uh, from the commissioners? Hearing none, I will uh, ask for a uh, motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we declare January 2019 as National Stalking Awareness Month for Sling County. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we, uh, we declare January 2019 as National Stocking Awareness Month for Saline County. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you, much. Abby. We'll move on to item number five. National Slavery and Human Trafficking Awareness Month Proclamation with Whitney Russell, Hotline Intake Advocate with DVAT. Good morning, Whitney. Morning. Thanks for having me. Um, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month Proclamation, January 2019. Whereas millions of men, women, and children are victims of human trafficking, which is the second largest and fastest growing criminal industry in the world. Whereas human trafficking denies victims basic human dignity and freedom is based on recruiting, harboring, and transporting people through use of force, fraud, and, co 
and or coercion for the purpose of sexual exploitation or forced labor. It is a crime that can take many forms and tears at our social fabric, debases our, hum our common humanity, and violates what we stand for as a country. Whereas the U.S. Justice Department has identified Kansas as an originating state for human trafficking, and most trafficking in Kansas involves local children. Whereas in 2017, the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas provided advocacy and emergency supportive services to nine victims of human trafficking. Whereas traffickers are increasingly utilizing social networking sites and online classified advertisements to recruit and advertise use for child sex trafficking, and parents and youth must be educated on this process and reality. Whereas with improved victim identification, medical and social services, training for first responders, and increased public awareness, the victims who have suffered this cruel crime can overcome the bonds of modern slavery, receive protection and justice, and successfully reclaim their rightful independence. And whereas the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas is joining forces with victim service providers, criminal justice officials, and concerned citizens throughout central Kansas and the United States to observe National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. Together we commit to a society where our sense of justice tells us that united we can eradicate this wrong and continue to fight for human dig dignity and the right of every person. Now therefore, the Saline County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims January 2019 as National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. and applauds the efforts of the many victim service providers, police officers, prosecutors, national and community organizations, and private sector supporters for their efforts in opposing human trafficking in all of its forms. Once again, I uh, thank very much uh, the, the people at DVAC and your efforts. Uh, this is an important thing, and, and, and the awareness is, uh, needs to be brought forward uh, as you're doing, uh, so much more so in today's world than ever before. So thank you for your efforts. Uh, again, I'll ask, uh, are, are there any activities that you have planned with your Awareness Month? Mm -hmm. um, besides what Abby had said, um, January 11th is Wear Blue Day for Human Trafficking Awareness. Um, and then Courtney Train has the radio interview with KINA on Saturday, January 19th from 9 to 10. And on January 24th, there is free human trafficking training focusing on the role of trauma-informed family and the recovery of survivors. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Comments uh, from the commission, questions? Not, I uh, will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we declare January 2019 as National Slavery and Human Trafficking Awareness Month for Sling County. Second. Been moved and seconded that we declare January 2019 as uh, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Awareness Month for Saline County. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you so much and thank, thank you. you for all your hard work, ladies. Thank you. Thanks. We'll move to item number six. RFA 102-19, Resolution 19-2267, reappointment of Department of Senior Services Advisory Council members with Rosie Walter Senior Services. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. Um, I'm requesting, Senior Services are requesting um, approval for your signature on the resolution to reappoint two board members, um, Archie Riggs and Nancy Klossmeyer. When the board appointed in February 2018, members were staggered, allowing Riggs and Klossmeyer to serve one year. Staff requests that they be allowed to remain on the advisory council for another term, expiring January 31st, 2022. So these are revolving uh, terms, uh, and, and as they get reappointed, it's for a three-year term, is that correct? Right. The terms are three years, but, you know, back when the board was established, right. you know, you guys allowed one year, two year, and three years, so I was never without, or they didn't all renew at one time. But as they, as they renew, though, <coughs> there will be revolving three-year terms. Correct. Uh, instead of the one, two, three-year. Correct. The people that were appointed for one year will now become eligible for a three-year term. Right. And that will all become three-year terms eventually correct as we as we go through it yes okay uh, questions or from a uh, uh, commission uh, one question Rosie uh, you might uh, re-educate me are there term limits uh, 
Well, I mean, they're, they're three-year terms, but um, in the bylaws, it doesn't have like really a term limit. They can re-up if they want, fill out a RFA, or expression of interest, okay. and be on it again. Um, you know, I think two years probably, I mean, if we want to change the bylaws, two terms is probably adequate. I, I would instruct uh, the staff to maybe look into that. Uh, I, I thought we had a term limit on there, but maybe not. Uh, it might not be, but something that we might consider. But uh, again, when you've got good people that are willing to serve, to uh, I don't have any, you know, and they're doing the job. It's our job to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to replace them if we don't feel like they're doing a good job. But uh, if they are, then I don't, I don't see anything wrong with them staying okay. right in there. So mm -hmm. that having been said, uh, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we reappoint Archie Riggs and Nancy Klostermeyer to the Saline County Department of Senior Services Advisory Council for another term. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 102-19 uh, resolution 19-2267 uh, for the reappointment of Depart Department of Senior Services Advisory Councils. Uh, I, I probably should ask for, is there any public comment being there's an RFA involved? Hearing, seeing none, I'll bring it back. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Item number seven. Senior Services Update with Rosie Walter, Senior Services Director. Good morning again, Rosie. Good morning. Um, in September 2000, or 2018, on the 28th of September, we had our um, advisory board and we discussed stats. We did a fiscal update, um, staff changes. We talked about the Sunflower Fair that we participated in and any pending contracts. And our next council meeting is this month on the 24th. Um, and then I've included the stats, the averages of every single month so you can kind of see and it's a little bit different if you look at my year than the Commission on Aging when they had it it's just that our board when they discussed stats they wanted this type of information the dining room full pay the subsidized dining room meals on wheels full pay subsidized meals on wheels and the adult daycare or sunflower but um, overall I would say if you look at the bottom numbers like in November you'll see that our average for a total is 347 so if you go down to November for the Commission on Aging you can kind of see they were 307 so our numbers are up on the average okay. questions is it from one question, Do the amount of meals served, does that correlate to um, positive impact to the budget? I'm going to say, and I can go through the budget with you. I actually brought it here with me if you guys want to go through it. It's not my final year in budget because I still have some encumbered stuff, but we can look through that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we can talk about that when we get to it if you want. Okay, um, grants on senior services, we received notification in January, on January 17th, on the CDBG grant, the Community Development Block Grant. So um, we'll find out if we actually received all the funding for the roof and the plumbing and the new bathrooms. Um, hopefully we'll get that. But right now, we're working on the 2020 CDBG for the kitchen. So we want to remodel the kitchen and then we want to put in a Meals on Wheels drive through That would be our next proposal. Unless we don't receive the first CDBG grant for 2019. If not, then we'll probably resubmit that with your approval. But might as well get on top of it and try to work out everything with the architect. Um, also, I'm right now I'm working on a grant for um, all the cabinets that go around the kitchen that we have on our serving line. So I, I need to replace all that. You know, we have curtains that cover the front, so I'd like to do a grant for that. So currently I'm working on that. And I'll probably use Dane Hansen for that. Um, contracts. Uh, right now, I have on the 22nd to meet with you on the North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging on the Subsidized Funding Grant. And then Aladdin, I'm hoping I can get that back from them this week, and then I'll have that in front of you as well. Um, miscellaneous different things that we've had is Prescott Foley House. You know, we had a huge fundraiser, and I know some of you were there. 
Um, we raised $9,158 at Prescott Foley House. We had, I would say, at least 1,000 people that walked through that door. We collected blankets, gloves, scarves. Oh my goodness, we collected so much. Um, I was contacted by the Prescott Foley House for this fundraiser, but yeah, it was huge. I know some of you attended. The money that comes in, was that going to your general budget or was that to fund Meals on Wheels? What Just for Meals on Wheels. So, yeah, $9,158 for that and I do I want to thank um, Sabrina Story and Troy Finney the owners of the house that allowed me us to do that it was a win-win for them it was their open house but you know we raised the money for us and then um, we did our 2018 fundraiser letter that went out and um, right now I can tell you that it's not finished but we've collected $32,903.12 from that um, for Meals on Wheels and just for senior services. And those monies, you know, will support everything from meals for seniors, um, any other needs that they might have. I mean, we have talked about before, you know, clients that didn't have shoes or needed shoes. Well, some of these monies can even support some of that. And then um, ma Match Madness is beginning, so, um, I've already gone to training on that. You know, last year um, you participated in that, and I'm hoping that I can again get some support for that, somebody to do free throws, maybe Andrew. Well, we're going to get somebody better than uh, than I was. Uh, my, my ability is caught up and left. You did fine. You we did will, fine. We will find someone. <laughs> well, we raised extra money off of you, so that's good. All right, so I'm hoping, you know, last year we raised 7,397 and 66 cents. So my goal will be to raise more than that from it. And that's it. Okay, uh, when, when do you anticipate uh, your, your 2018 budget being completed? Uh, well, um, I have one more. Um, I've encumbered some dollars in here. So, and I can actually put this out to you as well. This is just a preliminary report, and I haven't even gone through it with my board or anything. So as of right now, um, the total monies that I have brought in is 311183 and 19 my total expenses, though, um, is six hundred and fifteen thousand five twenty one and ninety six. So, and I've encumbered some dollars. Um, so, with that, I'm projecting that we will have approximately forty two thousand seven hundred and seventy two and twenty seven dollars remaining in our budget. So, when you calculate that, how much money we've actually brought in versus how much we have left in unencumbered, the total expenses to the county, if you want to look at it that way, was $336,338.77. And uh, refresh me, uh, our, our, uh, we budgeted what, 300 and? You actually budgeted 690294 and 23 cents in my 2018 budget. That was to that also did that also include Andrew the uh, to pay off the previous debt of of the previous why why was the number so high I can't recall that, it did not pay we paid off the previous debt our last year's budget okay but this was anticipating what we normally gave through raising of taxes plus her revenue so we'll have to do a little computation there to come up with different than the way she's done it sure i understand yeah. that. uh and i would encourage uh, those numbers to proceed quickly i mean you know as, as you recall in the past uh before it became under a Saline county department i mean we were back three or four years on looking at an audit right so it, it really will be helpful for us for us particularly as we're already thinking about the budget you know we're going to be looking at that in three or four months and mm -hmm. uh so we need to be able to compare those numbers and make a reasonable adjustment to to the numbers so but it does sound encouraging are there any other comments uh, from the commission for the senior services director i just want to say rosie thank you for your uh going after all the grants and and your work ethics over there uh, i think it's done a fabulous job thank you for the opportunity yep. i'm really yep. enjoying it okay good <laughs> any other comments 
If not, thank you very much, and we'll move on to item number eight. Emergency management update with Hannah Stambaugh, emergency management director. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is our uh, final fourth quarter update for the last uh, for 2018 um, in Got a couple of uh, pictures to go with my report. We'll start off with uh, weather. And as you can, if you can recall, the months of uh, October, November, and December were pretty, uh, pretty wet. Um, had uh, definitely a series in October, a period from the 7th of October through the 10th of October, several days of heavy rain that uh, created a potential for some flooding events. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea, this is um, a period of seven days showing the precipitation levels across the state of Kansas. So everybody got uh, quite a bit of, of moisture during just even that seven day time period. Um, what we looked at was probably anywhere from that four to five inches over that period. Obviously caused some flooding issues for us. Um, we did a lot of pre-planning knowing that this was coming and then uh, communication of course with any updates that we had with our road and bridge department and the city of Salina Public Works. Let me see, show you uh, just a kind of a comparison just to show you the in 20, 18 of um, our normal precipitation right there kind of in the middle is about about just a little over two inches and receiving almost six inches of, of rain just in the beginning of October is, is pretty significant at making it uh, the sixth wettest on record with the National Weather Service. Uh, this is a really good graphic just to show you. These are the things that we look at uh, when we are discussing a flooding potential, especially when our uh, flooding on our rivers. Uh, these are, uh, this is all uh, public knowledge that is a website that we utilize through the National Weather Service. And so we've we fielded quite a few phone calls from citizens regarding river levels and we were able to kind of direct them to this site so they could keep an eye on everything. But this really gives us a good idea as far as uh, what the potential uh, cresting of the river is, when it's going to fall below crests, and what the potential flooding impacts might be based off of historical records. So. It's, uh, it's really nice to be able to utilize these tools through the National Weather Service to help us gauge and plan appropriately. In November on the 8th, we experienced a snowfall event that resulted around five inches of accumulation in many parts of the, of the county. We did have one area out in the western part of the county that received almost seven and a half inches of snow. But luckily, that was the snow that was extremely wet and did not stick to the roadways. If you remember that one, it was like the perfect snow. <laughs> Um, but uh, that was definitely a, um, a good moisture event for us as well. And then if you can recall the Sunday after Thanksgiving, the blizzard of Thanksgiving, uh, we started watching and communicating those particular hazards way well in advance. Um, we knew that that was going to be a huge travel weekend and just making sure that everybody had the right information to make good decisions um, to alter their travel plans. We knew that this was going to be a major weather event across the entire state of Kansas to the point where Interstate 7 was closed from the Colorado border to Topeka for a period of time, uh, which is quite significant. I uh, heard a couple of stories for some folks that uh, they braced the travel and it took them several hours longer uh, to get back home. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea, for the 2018 year, we experienced an average of 30.14 inches of precipitation, and that is only about 1.36 inches behind normal values. So we actually did very good precipitation-wise for the 2018 year. Um, definitely the, the precipitation and the snow that we received that last quarter of the year has certainly increased the soil moisture that we see right now. Um, certainly will have some big uh, roles that will play in the upcoming grass burning season here within the next couple of months. For um, the emergency management department, normally the, the fourth quarter of the year is pretty slow. And for some reason this year, it definitely did not, uh, was, it, it definitely kept us busy with a lot of different activities, conferences, trainings, presentations. And one of the couple of highlights for you on October the 19th through the 21st, we held our third 
uh, community emergency response team class. And we had about 15 citizens that came and spent a weekend with us and learned different aspects of preparedness to help them as an individual and their families be better prepared for emergencies and disasters. But then also for them to have an opportunity to assist us uh, in the future should we have a major disaster or emergency that we need to augment some of our uh, uh, some of our emergency response capabilities uh, that we can utilize citizen volunteers that have been uh, further trained to assist us. So we're, uh, we're really excited about the opportunity uh, to bring this course in. This is a picture that we brought in the uh, students from the KU Medical Center and did a uh, stop the bleed training with our, uh, with our class, uh, which was really well received. Um, on October 24th through the 26th, we had an opportunity to, to deploy our um, emergency communications trailer. And this was used for a tactical incident dispatch class that is a nation class that was, or nationwide class that was brought here to the Kansas Highway Patrol. These are 911 dispatchers from all across the state of Kansas that operated in a remote environment inside of our trailer uh, to better prepare them for any type of major incident where they would have to either evacuate their 911 communication center or even um, be on site for a major event or emergency and actually dispatch out of a remote site. So this was, it was good exercise for our trailer. It was good exercise for them. Um, it, we were very happy to, to, for them to uh, be able to utilize it for us. Then um, the last major event that we had was on November 9th. We held a full-scale exercise with Blue Beacon. This has been an exercise that we have been planning since probably about March of 2018. Uh, so this is a collaboration between Blue Beacon, their staff, as well as the police department and sheriff's office and the Salina SWAT team. This was an active shooter type of situation or type of scenario uh, where we did have uh, law enforcement response to a simul simulated um, active shooter inside Blue Beacon. And this certainly tested the plans and procedures that Blue Beacon has um, implemented with their policies and procedures, uh, but then also with the actions and training of law enforcement as well. With any exercise, the whole goal is for us to learn the things that went right and also learn the things that went wrong and how it is that we can improve upon these. And we have to be extremely thankful for the staff at Blue Beacon. They are absolutely wonderful to work with. Uh, this is was a fun um, exercise to plant and was very, very, very well received, not only by their staff, but also families members of their staff. So we look forward to continue to work with them in the future. For our uh, fire districts, uh, because of the moisture that was received that October, November, and December, we really did not have a whole lot of uh, uh, fire activity. I remember um, sitting with District 5, they were pretty shocked for the um, month of October not having any fire run calls. They couldn't remember the last time that ever happened, going one month without having any fire runs. Uh, but I want to show you, uh, this is a, um, an event uh, with District 3. This is in the 13,000 block of West Magnolia Road. And if you can kind of recall, that particular area didn't have a whole lot of really good uh, roadways. Uh, but this was a, an incident that occurred with a, an electrical line that caused this particular grass fire. Um, I have to give some kudos to our GIS department. Uh, this picture was taken from a, uh, from a UAV um, or a drone. And then the fire chief sent this to our GIS department because the uh, Kansas Forestry Service and Kansas Fire Marshal's Office are really, really interested in getting better accurate data as far as numbers of acres burned. So uh, we took the, or they took this picture and then overlaid it on our mapping to get a more accurate idea as far as the uh, amount of acreage that was burned. So I have to give uh, huge uh, props to, to Judy Polinsky for helping out uh, Chief Apker with this. Uh, this is certainly something that he gets excited about and helps him with his reporting. Uh, so just in, to, for total, um, in October we had a total of 10 fire calls. In uh, uh, November we had a total of 8 calls, and in December, a total of 12. We are working on pulling our 2018 fire statistics um, here in the next few weeks, and we will have those available for my next quarterly update when that comes around.
So subject to any of the questions that you guys might have, that is all for my report. Okay, Hannah. Um, first of all, I think this is our first public meeting since your presentation on the radio uh, infrastructure uh, situation last week. Uh, that was well done. Thank you very much for informing all of us uh, as to what we were going to need and not need and et cetera. Uh, your trailers that you were doing the exercise with, would they fall under that same uh, restriction, so to speak, of the, uh, the radios uh, not being able to communicate and so forth? Or if they were in the wrong place, would they not be able to communicate with the, with the dispatch and, the, and so forth? That is correct. We do have public safety radios inside that trailer. Uh, to include, we do have a base station radio that can connect to the state 800 system. Um, but when we look at the potential of upgrading our radio system as the county whole, we will need to upgrade the radios that are inside of that trailer. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments from commissioners for have, have you? Uh, have you uh, been before the city commission on this, or is that upcoming? That is upcoming, and okay. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Okay. I was just going to uh, announce that part. So just for anybody who is interested in, um, we will be meeting with the city commission on Monday, the 14th of January. Okay. That meeting starts at 1.30 in the afternoon, and we will be in room 107B. It will be the same exact presentation that we gave to the commissioners, <coughs> uh, minus uh, some update and some radio traffic so they can hear some stuff that's uh, a little bit more recent. Uh, but we will have that discussion with them as well and all the county commissioners you're more than welcome to attend as well as uh, citizens and um, so we can at least try to get the information in front of them. I, I will be there since I was unable to be here last week so Great. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't I, I thought originally it was yesterday but gotcha. Yep. Good. Further questions or comments? If not thank you very much Hannah you. For, a, for a detailed report we appreciate that. Is there any other business to come before the Commission today? Under the announcements, I will remind everyone that we, uh, department heads and the commissioners will be meeting with our area <coughs> legislators today, later today at 11.30 a.m. at the uh, Road and Bridge Department uh, for lunch and uh, responses. It, it is open to the public. Uh, there will not be a public portion of the meeting, but, but the meeting is open to everyone concerned and uh, they may attend. So, that having been said, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and second that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. There will be a quick uh, study session to follow. Thank you.